Police and security guards in Belgium were caught flat-footed today by a cowardly sneak attack on one of the world's wealthiest men. The target was Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates arriving for a meeting with community leaders. Watch what happens when a team of hitmen meet him first with a pie in the face. <laughs> Gates was momentarily and understandably shaken, but he was not injured. The hit squad piled on with two more pies before one of them was wrestled to the ground and arrested the others for at least the moment and got away. Gates went inside, wiped his face clean, and made no comment. He then went ahead with his scheduled meeting. No word on the motive for this attack. William Henry Gates. software runs more than 90% of the personal... Better known as Bill Gates. Ex-CEO, co-founder of Microsoft, billionaire. Bernard Arnault, Jeff Bezos, Larry Ellison, billionaires. There was a list on Forbes that I recently discovered. Billionaire list showing the daily wins and losses of billionaires, such as Bill Gates, whose vast wealth stands at $101 billion. Or let's take Elon Musk, billionaire, co-founder of Tesla and SpaceX, who recently just acquired Twitter for $44 billion. Uh, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> and Elon's net worth is worth $139 billion, despite Tesla dropping 65% in 2022. Despite these losses, sitting at $139 billion, along with Warren Buffett at $110 billion. The founder of Berkshire Halfway is doing well. To say any billionaire is doing well, obviously is an understatement, but why are these billionaires doing so well despite economic turmoil, recessions, and pandemics? Why is Jeff Bezos well over $108 billion? <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> What I discovered was a billionaire list. The numbers were staggering. On this billionaire list, I found familiar names such as George Lucas, Star Wars owner, Jeffrey Lurie, Philadelphia Eagles owner, Mary Illich, Little Caesars, Pizza owner, billionaires. As I dug deeper into this billionaire list, I found that there are 728 billionaires and they had seen their assets increase over 50% higher since March 18th, 2020, the pandemic. These billionaires had seen their wealth increase 5.1 trillion. That's a gain of 2.1 trillion, more than 70% over pre-pandemic assets. And last May, it declined to 1.7 trillion. That's still up 50% since March 18, 2020. On March 18, 2020, Elon Musk had a value just under 25 billion. By May 2022, 255 billion. Jeff Bezos took a similar route as Elon, 113 billion, all the way to 150 billion. But why is there such a huge gap in wealth inequality in America? And why is there 2,100 billionaires? Let's find out why. What you see here is either a line chart depicting wealth accumulation or either an asset bubble. If recessions are so bad, why does the top 1% of the world love them? You ready to begin? Today we have is the a wealth gap that's the largest since that period. The top one tenth of one percent of the population's net worth is equal to the bottom ninety percent combined. You have to go back to nineteen thirty-five to forty. As a result, we have populism. Okay, populism is the disenchanted capitalism not working for the majority of people. I still remember it all, like it was yesterday. I remember 2000. This could be the most serious recession in decades. And that means life, as most Americans know it, is about to change. This was the time a decade ago when the financial crisis erupted, a crash that most experts did not foresee. I remember 2008. Economy, a modern economy can't function that way. 
A modern economy can't function without credit for more than even a couple of hours, frankly, seconds. Robert Schiller talked about the housing bubble. Alan Greenspan talked about risk taking, but nobody saw how widespread and devastating the crisis itself would be in terms of financial markets and financial institutions. This is crazy. The very rich have done exceptionally well in this economy. Other people have done okay on balance, but but it's, it's certainly the super rich. It's really been concentrated. You can just you know look at that figure from 92 billion to, to 2.3 trillion. Right. Financials took a big beating. Lehman down almost 20 percent. Now harking back to another time when the Nasdaq went on a furious jaunt, the turn of the century dot com rally where we took out the 5,000 level before unceremoniously and ignominiously diving thousands of points and wiping out a whole generation of investors. But this latest one felt different. If history uh, repeats itself, that is a scary scenario for this government. Is this a blip or is this the beginning of a bigger shift? And I don't see a, uh, any real weakness in the economy. Home building has been slow and it continues slow, but uh, the economy has been improving since the fall of 2009. The coronavirus, as it was called at the time, had spread from China to the U.S. Our Janice Mackey Freyer is in Wuhan. In this city of 11 million people, there's obviously a lot of concern, and people are taking any precaution they can to keep safe. Tonight, combating a dangerous, mysterious virus now spreading across the globe. Tonight, the CDC says the infected passenger passed through busy SeaTac Airport in Seattle, the first confirmed U.S. case of the contagious coronavirus now in Washington state. The infected American never facing health screening after landing. Tonight, all passengers arriving from Wuhan will be funneled through five major U.S. airports where heightened health screenings will be in place. It could be a $10 billion hole for us or it could be a $200 billion hole, and there's no way we can risk that money without a backstop from Treasury or the Fed. This is a public spectacle now. No, it's a public execution. Wall Street got bailed out, and Main Street did. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. I'm also asking every hospital in this country to activate its emergency preparedness plan so that they can meet the needs of Americans everywhere. The U.S. government would be suspending travel and enforcing lockdowns, not only nationwide, but worldwide. The first thoughts that raced in my mind were thoughts of fear, health, and death. But something in me told me to check the stock market. In times of panic, historically speaking, it's a recipe for a crash. Heart racing, fear in me, I fumbled around in my pocket nervously and pulled out my phone. I logged on to the app to check my stock portfolio as my hands shook at what I might see. You gotta be kidding me. Who would think of the stock market at a time like this? Lives are in danger. Mass chaos and panic is upon us. The decade-long bull market had came to a halt on March 11, 2020. Out of $2.8 trillion allocated in the last three packages, about $1.5 trillion has been dispersed. That's according to White House budget data provided to lawmakers and obtained by CNBC. Earlier today on CNBC, the Treasury Secretary said as that money starts to get into the economy over the next month, that should help until new aid is authorized. The NBC. That number will go up when the Fed's new lending programs get underway. But as of this week, programs like expanded unemployment insurance, FEMA disaster relief loans, the first wave of the COVID-19 pandemic swept the markets more than 20% from its current position, right into bear territory. I looked at my stock portfolio. It was in complete shambles, and I felt it was nothing I could do. But was that entirely true? Thoughts raced continuously in my head. How could I not have been better prepared for this all? You could have been better prepared. You could have studied more. You could have read more books. You could have watched more CNBC. But thanks to a recent dive into the world of option trading, 
I had enough insight to bet against the market by buying positions that went inversely against the market. Just like that, I was making money from the news of a pandemic. You're on a roll, kid. Enjoy it while it lasts, because it never does. Rolling in the dough. And you may be wondering, how can you make money off the stock market when it's going down? How and why would you bet against the stock market? Why would someone think of the stock market while a pandemic is even going on? The main thing about money, bud, it makes you do things you don't want to do. That's when it all began for me. I never wanted for this to happen ever again to me. To be caught off guard, the element of surprise would no longer master me. So I dedicated myself to becoming more knowledgeable, more experienced, and dove into anything I could consume that was stock related. I had begun a path to learning more now than ever from YouTube by following the stock market gurus. I dove into books head first, reading book after book after book until I was up to 70 books. I had become consumed by my losses to the point I was mentally and physically exhausted but locked in. I worked out more, read more, studied more, and hustled harder than I had ever before. It's all I talked about online with friends and family anymore. The stock market had consumed me, literally and figuratively speaking. Just as most of us around the world, I had become a hermit due to the pandemic lockdowns. I had become a stock market machine before I knew it. Or at least I thought I was. What once was a hobby had now become my passion and a lifelong path to understanding the stock market. Every season has its very own purpose. You're fired. Whether it's a job change, a move, death of a loved one, or other challenges and changes, the fact remains, seasons are a reality of life. We are in the latest season of economic recession after well over a decade of economic expansion. I know you may have some concerns and thoughts. When How do recessions stop? begin? How long does a recession last? How do we survive recessions? How did I lose my job? Why does it happen to me? Those fantasies of retiring early? All down the drain. Those dreams of walking away like the stock gurus promised you? Gone. Those dreams of buying the sports car, the mansion, the house on the lake, paying off your student loans, mortgages, and traveling around the world? All gone. Like old man winter, every year, your dreams of walking away, retiring early, have withered away. So you come to the conclusion that it's all one big Ponzi scheme. Jesus, Harry, you gave me your word. You know I know. Your life's been turned upside down, and the stock market gurus that led you to believe that you had a chance of walking away, nowhere to be found. So maybe you should just give up on it all and throw on the white towel as if you're a wary boxer in the 12th round. Maybe you don't have what it takes. Maybe society failed you. Maybe the system led you to believe it would be easy if you just stuck to the script. But what if I told you that you didn't have to abandon your dreams and hopes? What if I told you that there was still a way for you to capitalize on it all? Would you trust me? If I told you that a recession was merely an opportunity, would you believe me? If I told you that a recession was a springboard into the life you deserve, would you continue? If I told you that a recession was further down the line, but this opportunity would set you up for life, would you continue down the road despite the bruising past of loss and failure? Whether you're an investor or a trader, you will face turbulence. You will face days where you just can't look at yourself in a mirror. But you want to know the truth of the matter? The how is never as important as the why. 
Recessions are nothing more, nothing less than just a cycle. The top one-tenth of one percent of the population's net worth is equal to the bottom 90 percent combined. 1929 to 32 and, nine, and 2008 to uh, 2009, we have a debt crisis and interest rates hit zero. Both of those cases, interest rates hit zero, only two times the century. It, there's only one thing to do next, and that is to print money and buy financial assets. So in both of those cases, that's what the central bank did, and they pushed asset prices up. As a result, we had an expansion, we had the markets rising, and we particularly had um, an, ex an increase in the wealth gap. Because if you known financial assets, you got richer. And if you didn't, you didn't. 